Judge, uh, should health care reform be passed in whatever form? It looks like they're, they're foregoing the public option at this point, but they are, it looks like they're going to mandate that people bought, purchase health insurance. Do you see any legal uh, legal way to repeal this act? I mean, I've never heard of uh, anybody being legally forced. Well, to when you say repeal, it. you mean challenge before a court yes, or get a subsequent yes. Congress to? Challenge before in the court. Uh, there's an article in today's Wall Street Journal written by two friends of mine arguing that the requirement for purchase is unconstitutional. And they lay out very nicely uh, the reasons. But the basic reason is, if the government forces uh, you to, to separate yourself from your property, it's taking that property away from you, and the Fifth Amendment prohibits takings. So, of course the government forcing you to buy something is unconstitutional. Now people will say, well, what about car insurance? Car insurance is compelled by the states, not by the federal government. The states have different laws. They own the roads, and they have an obligation to keep them safe. But even they can't compel you to take out insurance to insure yourself. They can compel you to take out insurance so that if you hurt someone else, there's a pool for that other person to be made whole to the extent that money can make the human body whole. The states have the authority to do that. The feds do not have the reciprocal authority to do the same thing with our bodies. Look, the federal government had no interaction with individuals until after the administration of the worst president in American history. And prior to his administration, the feds only dealt with the states as states. You didn't need federal permission to do anything. The federal government didn't, didn't regulate any private behavior whatsoever. But after that monster Abraham Lincoln slaughtered 700,000 Americans, yeah. the federal government started telling people what to do. We even enacted an income tax, which was declared unconstitutional after he was dead. But of course he had already stolen hundreds of millions in property under the guise of the income tax before he died, sir. Uh, we in New York State, and it's too loud, I can't hear you. Step back. We in New York State, through primary challenge, have taken the uh, second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence to heart, and we are presenting across the state Project 2010, which is the abolishment and replacement of New York State government through referendum citizen vote. And we have a couple of legal advisors, and we've done this as professionally as possible, and I'd like to know if you can possibly offer us some advice as far as is this American courage that we claim in our government or otherwise? Well, it depends what you want to replace the New York government, uh, New York State government with. You could probably replace it with the first 2,000 names in any phone book, and they would be more reasonable than the legislature. <laughs> but the Constitution does require that the states have Republican, lowercase r, forms of government. So you can't replace it with a, with a, well, it already has a dictatorship. You can't replace one dictatorship with another. I'm sorry for being a little snarky. You, you would have to replace it with a form of government acceptable to the Constitution, which means the people electing representatives and, the, and there being three branches of government, executive, legislative, and judicial. Good luck to you. How are we doing on time? Keep going. Hi, Judge. Hi. Uh, I'm Bill O'Neill from Bucks County, home of Washington's Crossing, the other end of the beginning of the revolution. Welcome to Valley Forge, and thank you for your talks on freedom. Um, the Constitution is not a complicated document. It doesn't take up anywhere near as much space as the Patriot Act or Health Care Act or anything. Why not mandate that the entire Constitution be read and kept in context before any phrase is taken out and used as a guidelight for some some crazy legislation. You know, I had someone on Freedom Watch the other day whose name is escaping me, but who is the head of an organization uh, which is promoting legislation that would require that members of Congress read statutes and read the Constitution and identify where in the Constitution the Congress gets the authority to enact the statute and certify under oath that they have done so. Given your service in the New Jersey judiciary, uh, I was hoping you would elucidate the dichotomy of a civil action versus a criminal action, where now, for example, in a criminal action, traditionally it would be under the common law or under some form of an admiralty or military tribunal jurisdiction, 
they're bringing in these foreign jurisdictions, statutory jurisdiction, or these quasi or quasi-criminal jurisdictions, and they're throwing out a whole load of what I deem to be unconstitutional and just misnomers of jurisdiction. Uh, this, this is a, a question that would take many hours to answer, but the bottom line is that, like the things I've been talking about, even basic uh, rights are being worn away in the courtroom with every tick of the clock, and many things that used to be a tort, that is, a private wrong for which someone would have to sue, suddenly are becoming crimes in which the government sues in behalf uh, of the victim. The more and more uh, of cases that happen like that, the less individual freedom there is, because this is judges, not even legislatures, this is judges deciding that uh, particular behavior is criminal and requires the state to prosecute rather than a legislature deciding what the crime is. Now, that's the bad side. The good side is that the federal uh, constitution and currently prevailing judicial opinions still require due process, meaning that every statute be written down and validly enacted before the allegation of a crime. So, for example, if the government wanted to make it a crime to uh, join the campaign for freedom, they couldn't make that crime retroactive. They would have to give you notice of your behavior before you do it. So that's a backstop on judges uh, writing criminal statutes retroactively. So what you said there, uh, to adhere to the elements of corpus dialecti. I can't, I, can't, I can't take a second question. question. There are too many good folks. Right, I'll talk to you. Thank you. Judge, I just wanted to make a comment about health care reform. Um, I feel our family took responsibility about 10 years ago. We um, we have been spending about $2,000 a year just on high quality supplements and it has made a huge difference in my children and my husband and myself. Um, I just wanted to make people aware that the Republican, one of the Republican congressmen in Indiana has put forth a bill to the House, I believe, um, allowing for tax deductions for people who spend money on their own dietary supplements and that's taking personal responsibility. 